Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel McNally Money, home of all things stock, investment, and personal finance related. Now for today's video, we've got a really exciting one for you. We're going to be joined by the CEO of Koya Therapeutics. This is an exciting biotech player that we've covered on the channel previously, and we're going to be getting an update on this organization as they have a number of key catalysts on the horizon in the next few quarters. Now before we get into that, please take a second, hit the like button, you guys. It's a big help to myself and the channel. If you're not already subscribed, McNally Money, feel free to join. And let me know in the comments section below if you're currently holding shares of Koya, what you think about the biotech space overall, and your thoughts on today's discussion. Now with that being said, let's get into today's video. Okay guys, so that's right. Today's interview, we have Howard Berman, who's the chairman and CEO of Koya Therapeutics. Now this is one we covered on the channel back in March. There's been some major developments over the last few quarters. So we wanted to invite Howard onto the channel to really give us an update on this organization. So thanks so much for being with us here today, Howard. All right, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Right. Uh, you're you're always welcome, my friend. Um, now, first question for, for people who maybe missed that initial coverage on Koya, can you give us just a quick high-level summary of the company and a little bit about yourself and how you ended up with Koya Therapeutics? Sure. Just briefly about myself, I'm a, trained as a scientist. I'm a PhD in neuropharmacology. I spent my career in, pharma, in the pharmaceutical industry, developing different types of drugs, and then, of course, learning how to launch them and commercialize them. And I've, I've been involved with some multi-billion dollar blockbuster drugs. And I have a lot of experience in knowing what drugs are going to be successful and which ones aren't. Uh, and that led me, when I was in the pharmaceutical industry, led me to the opportunity that I'm, I'm at today with Koya. Unfortunately, my own dad uh, was a uh, diagnosed with a neurodegenerative disease. He had a cognitive dysfunction and he, his dementia was uh, slowly accelerating. And this is a triple board certified physician. So I pulled some strings. I got him in to see the best of the best at Houston Methodist, Dr. Santa Pell. And while there's not many treatments, unfortunately, that can slow or even stop the disease from progressing, Dr. Appel took me aside and he showed me what he had that he was working on. And that led me to found Koya with Dr. Appel. So it was a serendipitous meeting that led to the creation and formation of Koya. And I can tell you what we're working on today is remarkable and has the potential to not just slow, but to stop these diseases from progressing, multiple neurodegenerative diseases. Yeah, it's important to bring that up, I think, and sorry to hear about your father. We, we cover a lot of these biotechs on the channel, and I really like to bring that human element because at the end of the day, this is great technology, but you're actually impacting people's lives and families. So um, like you say, it's, it's kind of a bittersweet moment, I suppose. Now, Koya itself, you guys have a, a broad pipeline of different platforms and, and drug candidates. Can you give us a quick update on kind of what you're focused on? Right. So we do have a broad network of assets, but we are a very focused company. In this market, in this climate, you have to be targeted to drugs that could potentially uh, show commercialization and show an approval in the not too distant future. Our therapies are aimed at enhancing a type of T cell called the regulatory T cell. It's a subpopulation of T cells. So we want to ramp up the regulatory or the Treg versus another kind of cell, which is the effector T cell. Why that's important is imagine there are T cells which are responsible for fighting infection. We all know that. And consider them the accelerator in your car. When you push on the accelerator, the car goes. There is a small subpopulation, these T regs, that is the brake that tells the immune system to stop, to slow down. And when the T regs aren't working properly, your immune system is out of control and it can attack itself, attack its own organs. We've discovered that the T regs are not working properly, they're dysfunctional in neurodegenerative diseases, unfortunately. And they're, they're so bad that, in fact, we found that they are correlating to patient survival. So, we are, our goal is to use biologic drugs simple drugs that you can inject into your arm like an insulin injection and to ramp up those Tregs 
and stop that inflammatory process that is causing the decline of the patients, these neurodegenerative disease patients. But we take it a step further. We have other another biologic that while it ramps up the Tregs, we slow other inflama- inflammatory pathways, and we do it at the same time, like they do it in HIV and AIDS. You you put multiple drugs together, and you have a synergistic or or additive benefit in in treating these diseases. And that's what we're doing. And we've we have some pretty remarkable results in ALS and in patients and in Alzheimer's disease. And we are just getting started. We're ramping up quickly. I appreciate the explanation there, Howard. And I know for people in your community, the T cell function or dysfunction is is pretty common. Um, but just so I'm hearing this correctly, you guys are kind of fighting it on both ends. Hey, you're you're slowing the progression and you're you're fighting what's already uh, found to be dysfunctional in the T cell group. Yeah, we are hitting both aspects of the of the T cells. We're ramping up the, the the good guys in this case. We call it the good guys, the regulatory T cells which are stopping the inflammation. We want those guys to be up, but we also want to dampen down the other T cells, the ones that are the bad guys, the ones that are enhancing inflammation and attacking the, uh, the neurons. And so we're doing both simultaneously, and that seems to be really beneficial in slowing the disease or stopping the disease from progressing. Okay, great. And I know you've already got some exciting results. This is a clinical stage biotech company, so you're you're well uh, on your way down that that clinical pipeline. Now, what would you say really differentiates Coya from some of the other players in this space? Yeah, a lot of other there are very few companies that target the regulatory T cells in neurodegenerative diseases. So we're really leading the way in terms of that uh, pathway. Um, many other companies that target ALS, they are unfortunately only potentially incremental in slowing the disease and not doing a great job. For example, a recent company uh, got an approval for Relivrio, Amelix got approval for Relivrio, but they only slowed progression very mildly. We're talking the patients still declined significantly, pretty dramatically over six months. Uh, we're different than that. We, we're not looking at making an incremental. We're looking at exponentially either sl- uh, s- stopping the disease from progressing or slowing it to a point where the patients hardly progress. And that's what really differentiates us from, from competitors. We're not looking to uh, s- enhance the, the survival by a few months. We want to convert ALS to a disease like HIV AIDS, where the patients can live for many, many years and not decline uh, over the short period of that they typically decline. And in Alzheimer's, we're looking at doing the same thing. And in our data has shown that patients actually improved. Patients' cognitive function was enhanced. So that's why we are uh, in a double-blind randomized trial now, funded by the, the, the Alzheimer's Foundation and the Gates Foundation. And we're waiting to see what that data looks like. And if it can confirm what we saw in an early trial, we're going to be I think really making a uh, an, an exponential improvement in care in on, for the next stage of the trial design. Gotcha. Yeah, it, it really is incredible stuff, and I, I think most people have a family member, unfortunately, that's that's suffering from one of these um, conditions or, or diseases. So appreciate the work there. Now, the next question I have for you, I recall when I went through the investor deck last time, a number of key strategic partnerships, you said you've been in the industry quite some time, you've got a long track record and a lot of these, uh, these relationships established. So can you speak to us a little bit about some of these key partnerships that Koya currently has? Sure. So we pretty early on established a relationship with Dr. Reddy's laboratories. <clears throat> they're a multi-billion dollar, they're <clears throat> known as a generic drug company, but they really are getting into biologics and branded biologics and are uh, a wonderful partner. They're a $11 billion market cap company, give or take, and uh, they saw the value in what we're doing. So they, <clears throat> they're they supplying us one of the assets, which is the CTLA-4, which is the proposed biosimilar Abetacept. And then we're partnered on our other biologic, Lodose IL-2, with a company called AR Science Bio, uh, which is run by a very experienced group of executives who have uh, the the bio, 
which is a very hard to find biologic and they've licensed us the IP on making that biologic. So those two partnerships are critical. And I can tell you there's a lot of interest in what we're doing uh, with these biologics. There's lots of discussions ongoing and uh, we're bullish about the opportunities ahead. Yeah, most definitely, especially with companies of that size showing interest as, as you expressed there, Howard. So my next question for you, we covered uh, your company, I think, back in March. There's obviously been a number of big press releases since then. Uh, you just alluded to the double blind study, which is kicking off. Can you tell us kind of some of the key uh, or, or bigger press releases that have come out over the last couple months that we should have on our radar? Sure. Well, I will say we, re- we added onto our board the former CEO and chairman, of Bayer Pharma, which is a global pharmaceutical company. He loves what we're doing and he is uh, very excited and bullish about our prospects. But we've, as I mentioned earlier, we released data in March, which showed that the biologic combination stopped the disease from progressing in ALS patients. So that was the early kickoff. We've subsequently shown in Alzheimer's that one of our biologics, which we're now being tested as a monotherapy, uh, enhanced cognitive function, which was remarkable. And it actually blunted the pro-inflammatory effects in the brain using PET imaging, and it it reduced the biomarkers. And that, uh, furthermore, we then issued a press release which uh, discussed that we have a double-blind study, and that'll read out in May or June of next year. And this is going to be a a well-powered, randomized double-blind study. So I think those press releases, and there are other ones, including our Exosome platform, which is a unique RMD platform where we've licensed in a new technology and and our partners are Carnegie Mellon on that. And that's a great institution. That's a next generation science that allows us to modify or manipulate exosomes, which are a type of vesicle in the cell. But that's uh, sort of the future of partnerships with potential companies. And uh, like I mentioned, we are focused on these two biologic assets at present. Great. Yeah, a lot going on for sure. I know you mentioned spring as kind of the readout time frame for this double blind study. Is there anything else kind of looking forward in the near term here we should keep an eye on? Right. We're very excited about our prospects. We have a lot of interesting opportunities underway. We're bullish about our, our prospects, as I mentioned. And uh, what I'll just say is we're excited about the future. Great. I got to ask. I know you guys uh, can only say so much on these interviews, but you know where to find us, Howard. And as soon as uh, you're able to share, we're we're welcome uh, to have you back and and share with the audience. Now, um, last question, and then I'll kick it over to you. On a macro scale in North America or worldwide, really, I know we're seeing a lot of excitement in the biotech space. Um, it seems with the introduction of AI and some new technology, it's, it's rapidly expanding. So can you speak to us a little bit about the macro sector and, and kind of the overall outlook here? Sure. Well, AI is a very innovative tool that's being used and applied in multiple areas, particularly in drug design and drug discovery. And I think AI has a has a role in neurodegenerative diseases. And it's certainly, there are ways to leverage AI in what we're doing. And uh, we're looking at all different options. And we have an incredible partner at Houston Methodist, where we have a sponsored research agreement. And they have all sorts of technologies. They're using AI and they're using other novel next generation approaches. And our ability to draw on their work and their science is really a key benefit of what we're doing at COYA because otherwise, if you can't leverage the academic institutions, then you're not maximizing the potential of your company. Uh, so we're we're excited about all these innovations and we intend to use them. Gotcha. And, and that's exactly why those partnerships are so key. Um, so Howard, I really appreciate your time today. I'll, I'll give it back to you for any closing thoughts here. We'll leave the company website and all the social media in the video description below. Um, but I'll, I'll kick it back to you for any closing thoughts or final comments here. Sure. Well, we are very focused and I'll, I'll tell any potential investor, we're not, we don't waste money. We're not, uh, we, we don't spend money frivolously. We're, we've been very budget conscious and we've delivered on all the things that we said uh, that we promised people when we went public. 
And I think people have rewarded us because we are, and, and you can't judge a company by its stock price, but we've remained stable and we have not depreciated the value of our, our stock. So I think that just gives you a semblance that we are unique and differentiated from other people out there. But we, I believe we're, we have a long, long ways to show tremendous value. We have some very exciting things in the future and we're all personally vested in this company. We're all financially vested. We've all uh, believe that this disease is highly, there's a highly unmet, high unmet need in these disease conditions. We all have family members that have been afflicted. So this is very personal to us and we intend and we expect this company to really deliver the value to patients and their families. Yeah, exciting stuff for sure. And I think that's a very fitting way to end this out. Um, we appreciate your time today, Howard. We look forward to seeing some of these developments. And as mentioned, you're welcome back anytime to kind of keep us surprised. You guys, if you have any questions for COIL or Howard specifically that we didn't get to in today's presentation, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. If you're still watching, hopefully you found some value. So hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for being with us here today, Howard, and we look forward to following the story from here. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Take care. Yeah. <laughs>